Hi, this is Carol Gill with Carol Gill Consulting, and you are listening to Conversations with Pearl. Hello, sunshine. Good to see you again. Had to walk out to let you back in. Stuck in a storm of a relationship. Lost my fire. Oh, and I forgot about it. I am so excited to have you on this episode of Conversations with Pearl because I have a special guest who I'll tell you in a few minutes a little bit more about. But if you watch the Better Questions, Better Life at the end of each episode, you're going to be pleasantly surprised to meet the person who is behind the cards today. But first, I want to tell you about our guest, Carol Gill. She's a dear friend of mine, but also she's an amazing professional speaker, a management consultant, executive coach known as an attitude expert and people developer. She takes that dynamic approach to turning best practice theory into reality, enabling individuals to be more effective leaders, communicators, collaborators, and team builders. She, for more than 25 years, Carol has helped hundreds of leaders and their teams attain and sustain outstanding results by strengthening employment engagement, developing emotional intelligence, and building effective relationships in the workplace. And I can tell you, I benefit from it through our Chamber of Commerce here in Brandon, Florida, and our leadership program. And I've been so excited to also become really dear friends with Carol. So Carol, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Pearl. I'm thrilled to be here. So excited to have you. And I can't wait to share a little bit about the cards as well a little bit later. But I always like to start with going back, like kind of go back to that child that you were and share a little bit about your childhood and what it was like growing up and what inspired you to become the amazing person you are today? Oh, wow. That, that's a lot in one question. Okay, so childhood, I was one of seven kids. So we uh, had a very large family and my dad and my mom, God love them, uh, managed through that. I'm not sure quite how, but they were very different. So dad was very command and control and everything had its place. And mom was very unorganized and chaotic and what I learned early on, I was a middle child, so I had to um, learn how to maintain harmony in the environment, <laughs> because if I could do that, then everybody was getting along and life was good. So, gosh, to dial ahead, how did I end up doing what I'm doing? I, I actually moved to Florida back in the 80s, and I have been here ever since from Pennsylvania. Um my boys, who are now grown men, live here, and I have three wonderful grandchildren, so I, I love to be able to see them. I worked for GTE, which is now Verizon, for about 17 years, and in that process, um, went from lots of different positions, from a clerical uh, financial person into human resources, uh, had a wonderful job there that I loved, and that was eliminated during deregulation and downsizing and all that jazz, but in the process of trying to work through some of the shifting and changing that was going on, I found my passion. And my passion was really working with groups of people, teams. Um, I was asked to work with a, a group of 12 people to develop um, what we called high performance team process. And in that, I went through a lot of certification training, um, learning how to be a facilitator. And as a result of that, when my next position was eliminated, um, I decided that I wasn't going to stay anymore. So I took the package of severance. I had six months worth of salary that I figured, well, if I can make it on my own, uh, I, I will do it. If I can't, I'll go back to work for somebody else. And that was in 1996. So since then, I have been working with organizations all over the U.S., uh, large and small, senior level, all the way down to frontline managers, and helping organizations become more effective through their people. And um, and so I know that here in the world of Brandon, where we're, we're both located, 
Uh-huh. The Brandon Leadership, you've started a great program with them, right? So tell us a little bit about that program that you've helped. The, I mean, it's touching so many. I think you've done it like 20 years. 20 like, years. I, this 20 is my years. 20th year. Yeah. So yeah. That, that is a Brandon Leadership is a community leadership program that's sponsored through the Chamber of Commerce. And it really has three different areas that we focus in on. One is learning about the community. Second is learning about yourself and who you are, want to be as a leader. And then thirdly, figuring out how you can tap into the community that's out there to give back. So it's really about serving your community as well. And I went through the program myself in 2001 um, because my banker suggested that I do it. And I said, wait a minute, I teach this stuff. Why do I need to go through this? But what I realized is I had lived in this community for over 20 years, but I still didn't have a clue what was going on behind the scenes. And so the program really gives people the opportunity to get close and personal with things that are happening. For example, the judges, the courthouse, the sheriff's department, we go in, we learn, we hear from their leaders. And we tie that all together through our own leadership development piece, which is the part that I facilitate. And then ultimately, the class selects a a nonprofit to do a project for to create some kind of a legacy give back. So it's really it's a 10 month program. It's awesome. It's my way of giving back to the community. And I've met lots and lots of people through that and made lifetime friends. Yeah, I went through it last year and it was like it was, you know, and I was part of some part of the community, but I was amazed how much I didn't know about the community, Uh like how much more there was to learn. and how many different nonprofits serve our community. That's oh, absolutely. Like so eye-opening. And then, you know, building that community, the camaraderie with other business owners was so mm-hmm. impactful. And, and to know, like, you know, we're, we're all in that same space. Like we, you know, we go out in the world, we put this mask on and we want people to think, oh, life is so great. But as we got to know each other, we realized we all have stuff we deal yep. with, right? I mean, well, there's stuff there. And, and then how do we take that stuff and, and build a great business and, and also like balance life. Like, you know, Uh whether you're, you know, a single person, you're married or you're married with with children, or maybe you, you're the CEO mom, you know, that's trying to balance life and your household. And, you know, it was really eye opening for me to see, you know, I'm not by myself in this world. There's so many people that are going through this. And um, so I want to ask you leading to that, Carol, like through your, through your, your professional career, you were, I know you're a single mom as well, raising children, Mm -hmm. like speak to those single moms at home that are that professional that's trying to balance their, their CEO home set, as well as their CEO world of business. And like, how did you do that? What kind of challenges did you find that you had to overcome? Well, my, when I first started with GTE, I mean, my kids were little, so thankfully I had my parents close by and they helped a great deal when they were really young. But I, you know, growing up, with with two boys and all of the things that had to happen in life, it was balance was not even possible. So it was what I learned early on is it's all about integration, right? So how do I decide where my focus has to be right now? And knowing that I had a full time job that was very demanding, but also that these two little young men were part of what I was responsible for. Um, it was challenging to say the least, but I think the, the lessons that I learned over time is that I had to give myself permission to say no. It took me a long time to learn that because I felt like I had to be and do all for everybody. I, (laughs) I described myself as super mom, super woman, super daughter, you know, um, but at some point, when you reach the max, you have to realize that you, you can't be good for other people until you're good to yourself. And I think, you know, it was close to crash and burn for me um, at one point. And I finally realized that I needed to reach out and ask for help, that I needed to figure out how to really put things into a perspective that I could manage from. And since that time, and that was way back, um, mid-20s, late 20s, early 30s, what I've realized is being able to be with people like you and other people like me really helps me understand that A, I'm not alone. B, I can make it through anything. I've proven that myself uh, over and over and over again. No matter how bad it is, there's always going to be something better on the other side. 
And with that mindset, which I teach a lot of, right, is, is mindset, emotional intelligence, how to help people see who they are and recognize that they do have choices to make. And once you get to a place where you recognize you are in control of your life, nobody else is doing things to you, you can then say yes to this and no to that and really find that that area that makes sense for you because you're constantly doing this, right? You've got to give up something to get something, but you don't want to give up something that you're not aware of until after the fact. That's, that's not a good place. So being intentional about what those choices are, where I spend my energy and how I re-energize myself has really made a big difference for me. Yeah. Like, like you said, so many things are like learning to say no. I mean, we, Mm. you know, we talk about that often here and I coach on that, that, you know, we say yes so excitedly, but we feel so much guilt when we say no, like, oh, they're not going to like me. They're going to think right. bad of me. You know, all those things come to mind. Right. And then I like what you said, like being intentional about what you're saying yes to. Like, mm-hmm. does it really align with what you're doing? Is it filling your cup? Like you said, like if you're not filling your cup and somebody else is filling your cup, you're not going to be happy. You're going to have more of those down and you're going to have those ups that come. And and I love what you said, too, about always understanding that no matter what is thrown at us, no matter what challenge is thrown at us, there's something to learn and you're going to come through the other side, right? That we're not alone, right? That's exactly right. And, you know, I mean, all kinds of life challenges have have happened for me, just like for you, for for everybody that we know. And we feel very isolated a a lot of times because we feel like, oh, we're the only ones dealing with this. And the reality is we're not. Um, what I found is reaching out to people is what's really, really important. Um, you've got to have safe people, even if it's one person or two people that you can go to, to vent and throw around, you know, how you're feeling and, and someone that's not going to judge you, but is truly going to listen and help you process through. And, and I think, you know, that's why I'm good at what I do because I've learned over the years of pe- for pe- from people doing that for me. You know, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to ask you questions so that you can discover what matters most to you. And that's, that's really, I think what I do best. So I totally agree. I think that's definitely what you do best. Cause I know I personally have called you and said, Hey, you know, I'm working through this. What do you think about this? And you've helped me like, and what what I love about you too. And I know that you coach on this too, is you don't give me the answers. Like you Mm -hmm. help me pull the answers out. Like it's in there. My subconscious knows it's back there. I know right. that, right? And, and you help me pull that out. And I love how you do that. And I know you do the disc profile because mm-hmm. I benefit from it. And man, I, I look at that often. I pull my paper out, go, where am I now? Do I really feel like I'm still there? You know, and so tell us a little bit about that coaching and um, and how you've seen that, you know, as we shared in the opening, how you've seen that people become better communicators and leaders. Okay. Yeah. DISC is um, a personality assessment. We used to call it a behavioral assessment, but it really is, it, it really is about personality. It's, um, it is a research-based tool. So I use the Wiley brand, which is the best that's out there in the marketplace today based on the research. Um, it really helps people recognize that everybody's different. And, you know, we say that, but do we really understand it? Because typically we expect people to act the way that we do. And when they don't, then we think there's something wrong with them. And what DISC helps people understand is there there really are a lot of differences out there and people don't see the world the same way you do. And that doesn't make them wrong. It makes them different. And different is good because that's how we learn. So DISC is a four quadrant model. We have, you know, D, I, S, and C. So it's basically four personality types. It breaks into 12 different styles that we've actually been able to create as a result of the research. And it helps people understand, first of all, why they do what they do, what makes them tick, what they're motivated by, what stresses them out. And then the second piece is, what can I do differently to get a better result? And and that's really the key to me for any kind of assessment that you do. It's a piece of information. It's it's not the end all be all, but it gives you a foundation to then say, okay, if if I love enthusiasm and I want to be out there and talking to all the people all the time, there are other people that I interact with that don't like that. And if I want to be in fa- in effective with those other folks, then I need to tone my enthusiasm down a little bit. It doesn't mean I have to change who I am. It means I just modify my approach so that they can relate to me. Because if I'm off the wall with my, you know, cheerleader, they they tune me out. 
So it's to my benefit to be able to dial it up and dial it down when I need to. And that's just one example. But DISC really is a tool that helps us understand how to do that. And it also helps understand what other people need from us. I'm a firm believer in the Stephen Covey principle. To the degree that you give others what they need, they will give you what you need. And and so, you know, when you listen and you talk to people from their point of reference, they're much more willing to listen to you. And that's what I've learned. And DISC has really taught me that. I also use it as a developmental tool for emotional intelligence skills because it's really teaching social awareness self, and, and relationship management as well as self-awareness and self-management. So, so it's a great tool. It is an awesome tool. I was just at a retreat this past weekend and I actually was putting a lot of it to work because you, know, you get 12, 13 women in one big household. And um, and it was funny. I met this beautiful lady. And I'm sure she's going to listen to this. Her name was Julie. And um, we were doing the cards or cards we were doing. And I said, take a card. Don't read your card. Put your card down and don't look at it. She's like, yes, ma'am. Yes, Bill Sergeant. I was like, oh, what was that? And I, I'm like, oh, Julie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be like so intense. You know, I was like, I was like oh, that did come out like a drill sergeant. You know, mm. so and I had to think back going, OK, I, I had to really think about her personality. And, you know, when, so when I went back to her, I circled back around. And I kind of did her like in the middle of the group, her card. And um, I was, came from the more loving side of, of that. You know, there you go. <laughs> so, but it's so interesting because like I took Dale Carnegie years ago and like the disc and Dale Carnegie understanding like and even like I said, Stephen, putting that all together. It's been mm-hmm. really, you know, powerful for me. And it's made a big difference in my life. And even how I communicate with my kids, you know, before Matt passed, how I communicate oh, yeah. with him. And even Nate now, Nate's very much, you know, very, you know, very like matter of fact, direct, just tell me what you want to tell me. I'm good. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's been really powerful. Um, so tell me, so who do you work with? Like, I know you work with, with the chamber here, but mm-hmm. I know that you've been traveling recently and bringing your training on the road. So for the listeners that are out there, share with them, like what, type of companies and and entities do you work with? Okay, so um, I work with large corporations as well as small businesses. So it really varies. Um, I was just out in Utah. I did a a leadership development program for 50 senior leaders. Um, So I do travel when the client needs me. And this is a client that I've I've worked with. They're a manufacturing organization. Um, I work with many hospitals. Uh, Healthcare is a big area for me. And it's been uh, very fulfilling, especially through COVID and, and knowing our healthcare workers were just maxed out. So a lot of the work that I do has been with healthcare organizations. Um, and now, you know, I'm, I'm not young anymore. I'm, I'm on the other side of 50. So I'm looking for opportunities to maybe branch out a little and do more with women. Um, my focus has not been primarily women in the past. And it's it's one of those things that I feel like I've gotten so much value from my education and my learning and my experiences that I want to be able to share that. And it seems that women are those folks who suffer most with not not having that venue or that ability to really have conversations that are meaningful. Um, from a work perspective and a, and a leadership perspective. So I'm shifting a little bit. I'm not sure what that's going to look like yet, but I, I do group coaching as well. So I work with um, mostly executive level or senior level people, but um, looking at doing more group coaching and being able to make things more affordable for people who want to work with me. I love that. And so we are the benefit. As most of you listen, we hold our annual retreat and we just finished our sixth retreat in mm-hmm. the Gulf Shores of Alabama. And Carol, this was your third year with us. Yes. And I'm excited for next year and years to come. And, and I know the training, I've watched the women like when you were there and you share about the disc and you train us on that emotional intelligence, tying all together. I watched them thrive through the weekend. I watched them grow over that weekend. And so if you're listening, please, you know, Carol is amazing in all those aspects and a great trainer, a great leader, and just a great person understanding like where we're at and helping us, you know, understand meeting us where we're at. And I think that's so important, like when you're working with a coach, because oftentimes I've had clients come in and be like, well, my coach said that they do everything perfectly and they do it this way. I'm like, well, how do you want to do it? Right. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> just because I do one thing one way doesn't mean it's going to work yeah. for you, you know? So yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's that. funny because I, you know, coaches, there's a lot of coaches out there. There are people who have hung their shingle and said, I'm a coach. And I'm cautious about using the word coach because it, it has got a bad name in some areas. So my philosophy has always been that I am not the end all be all answer person. My job is to facilitate you through a process of discovery. And facilitation means guiding you, not telling you. So I'm not somebody who gives advice freely. Um, sometimes if you ask me what I think, I might tell you. But other times I'm going to say, well, you know, I think there's many ways you can look at that. What do you think? And I'm going to put it right back in your lap. Because truly, the people that I work with really do already have the answers. Um, they don't recognize all of the background. And and, and we, we forget about the experiences that we've had a lot of times. So my job is to remind them. You know, how have you gone through this kind of a situation in the past? What did you do that worked? What did you do that didn't work? And how did you get on the other side of it? And usually in that kind of a dialogue, they're going to figure out what their next steps are. Um, and yes, I have processes and I, I do training. So there, you know, some of what I do from a coaching arm is is really giving um, skill development. But for the most part, it's it's more about helping you on your own journey and that's what a good coach should be doing. I agree. I love sharing the story when a few years back, I was helping a lady. I think she was in her early 60s and she was came to me and she wanted to lose some weight. She wanted some help with that. And I didn't weigh her a measure like at the beginning, like I always did at the end. But in her head, she didn't understand because that's what everybody else did. Mm -hmm. And I sat down next to her. I'm like, OK, so when you lose all the weight, you know, when you reach your goal and you lose the weight you want to lose and you become healthier what's what's your life like she's like don't you want to weigh me and measure me oh no we don't need to do that right now and mm -hmm. i like and so i was able to dig down deep with her and she's like i just want to meet somebody i've been divorced for 10 years i don't want to be single the rest of my life i'd like to have my retirement with a partner and so i was like okay so what do they look like what do they do what are their ethics mm -hmm. what are they married? she's like these are some really big questions i've never <laughs> asked myself right? that's exactly right yeah and i'm like if you don't know those answers you're not gonna know when they come into the into your world you're not gonna recognize that oh i've been looking for you you were supposed to be who i was supposed to be with and right. so at the end before i set her off for the day i you know we weighed and measured her of course and so as the process went on and she reached a goal you know we graduated her off and about, i think it was like six months later i ran into her in Publix. And she's like, oh, my gosh, it's so good to see you. And all of a sudden, this gentleman comes walking over and he was everything she wrote down that paper. Like, oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, your homework re works really well. She's like, isn't that funny? I'm like, see, we have it back here. We just need to pull it out of our, uh, exactly. out of our head and, and work with it. I think it's so cool. Yeah. So I just love everything you're doing for everybody. But I want to ask you this. So. You're out here. You're doing these great things, training. Give us our answers. What does Carol do for self-care? Like, what do you do for self-care? Well, I actually like the beach a lot. So my self-care is, I. there's a little place at Treasure Island that I like to go. I just show up. They have a chair and an umbrella ready for me. And I hang out on the beach. And I love the water. And I love the sun. And I love the sand. So I'm definitely a water person. Um, that's one of the things I do. Another thing that I do is I hang out with my grandkids because they're really cool little people. Um, I have a nine-year-old grandson who plays baseball, so I try to get to as many of his games as I can. And I have a 12-year-old granddaughter who is um, an amazing young singer and actress, and she's very, very fun to hang around. And then I have a 16-year-old grandson who just got his driver's license permit. So that's a little scary. But yeah, so I, I love spending time with my grandkids and with my, my sons. Um, that's a, a big part of my life. And then I have some really awesome friends. And, you know, so my life is very full of, of difference and people and fun. And, but, you know, I am really an introvert and I, the, my downtime is the beach. It truly is. That's my favorite place. So I, every time you say you're an introvert, I'm like, I don't, I never see that about you. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's I know. a lot of people don't. <laughs> right? Yeah. But that's how we feel inside. You know, that's how we are. And I love that you do go to the beach. I love, you know, of course we're here in Florida. We have lots of beaches near us. And I yeah. always tell me, I love, you know, good self-care, as we said, is pouring into your cup. And I love that, you know, you pour in your cup by the grandchildren, the beach. And, you know, like I do staycations once a quarter. I, my staycation was just at a retreat, you know, so that I think it's really important for those that are listening to understand that. And we've said it before, but you really have to fill your cup and it has to overfill. And, you know, when we don't, then 
we're lacking and we're not happy and we're stressed. We have anxiety. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I can remember years ago when I was just over overwhelmed. I was doing everything for everybody. My work was crazy. Kids were little, you know. I was going to visit my dad in Gainesville because he had um, surgery on his knee. He had had a knee replacement operation and my mom was already up there. So my sister and I were driving to Gainesville just to spend the day. And I was so exhausted. I mean, I didn't realize how exhausted I was, but I was starting to get like a cold and I was coughing and I I just felt miserable. So when we get to the hospital, I told my sister, I'm just going to go down the emergency room and see if they can give me some kind of cough medicine or something. Um, <laughs> they admitted me. I had whopping pneumonia. Um, my, 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 what do they call it? The blood oxygen level was so low. But, but I had run myself down so badly trying to take care of everybody else. And I ended up in the hospital with IV antibiotic for the next seven days. So so if we don't take care of ourselves and we're so busy taking care of everything else and everyone else, eventually our body is going to say enough. And whether you get sick or you have a breakdown or you're just totally exhausted and you can't function anymore, you've got to get that that all of all of what's happening with you, you've got to get it into perspective because otherwise you lose yourself in the process. And that was a huge lesson for me. And I, I can remember going back into the office and telling my boss, you know, I was choking up when I was doing it because I just felt like I was really going to let him down. I said, Charlie, I can't do this anymore. And he was he was the VP of HR. I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't work these 80 hour weeks. I, can't, I just can't do it. And he said, well, it's about time you realize that. Now, and, you know, people have said, well, that was pretty nasty of him. And I said, no, not really, because he would leave at six o'clock and tell me to get out. And I wouldn't go, you know, and he figured as long as I was going to keep doing it, keep, keep, keep it up, you know, what's he going to do? So we have to, we have to set the boundaries. We have to set our, our yardsticks or whatever you want to call them, ground rules and say no more, we've got to stop. And, you know, that's one of the messages that I have for a lot of women is that we don't have to be the overachievers all the time. Um, They're really that sense of having to prove ourselves has, has caused a lot of stress for a lot of women. Yeah. And this is all this stuff we just touch on is what we discuss every on Sunday evening in the Shira league. We talk about those things, about the boundaries, about, you know, learning to say no. And we talk about how to, how to find that balance in the life. Uh And you like you said, you know, your boss is watching you saying, Carol, go home. And you're like, okay, you know, and then you stay. And so he's like, I'm not, can't force you to go, you know? No. So, yeah. And so, you know, when it takes something, like you said, our body shutting down in some way to say, Hey, wait a minute. I have an yeah. uncle who he went, like, he goes and goes and goes. And he went to California to go visit some family. And my cousin in California mentioned that his legs look swollen and he came home here to Buffalo and he ends up in the hospital. He had walking pneumonia and he had um, something going on with his heart. So, oh. you know, and he just, Goes and, goes, and he had been the doctor in a couple of years. It's like your body's going to tell you when it's, it really is. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, I've, I've done some study on human design and which is a whole nother ball game, but, <laughs> but it's really interesting to see how your body is made up and, you know, your mind is one thing and your body is another and how your, your thought process can, can drive a lot of behavior that really doesn't make good sense when, you know, if you're not listening to your physical body, there's something wrong with that. And it took me a long time to learn that, but it's definitely worth paying attention to. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And, you know, but this past Sunday we had Julie um, DeLuca. She helped us do like walk through creating habits and tiny habits and uh-huh. creating anchors, you know, and, and creating that. And so that's one of the things that I really, that my passion is a Shiro League and helping women, you know, to t- do the things we're talking about, and create those boundaries because we uh-huh. get so busy with life. And I feel like, you know, we all did great through COVID. We learned how to, well, that create some balance in our life, but now we're starting to come back and we're like going, that craziness is spewing up again. It's like, come on, you know, create that balance because yeah. the cup has to be so full. So I can't believe we're closing up. Like I just looked at the clock. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's I know. Whole- <laughs> it's this time. So Carol, tell everybody what you have coming. I know I just signed up for the training. So people yes. local to Brandon, or if you're listening and you want to fly in for the training, Absolutely. In the Tampa area. So tell us about the training and what else you have coming up. 
Okay, so November 30th, I am doing a, a women's workshop. So it's a workshop for women only. It's called Emerge, and Emerge is coming out from something, right? And it's really about living deliberately and creating consciously the life that you want. Um, I am a firm believer in thoughts become things. And what we think about is what we create. And what we think about, if we're not thinking positive, we end up getting more of the negative. So that's a big part of it. But it's really looking at, are you truly living your life deliberately or is life just happening to you? And for, for many years, life was just happening to me. I didn't realize that I could make choices. And some of us get stuck in that mindset of, I have to do it this way because that's just the way it has to be. And there's always choices. So this is all about um, helping women clarify what matters most to them and what they want to do about that. Um, we know that individuals who have clearly defined integrated plan for both their personal and their professional life achieve much higher levels of success. We know that. Now, I'm not a big everything has to be written down on a spreadsheet, but knowing where I want to be and how I'm going to get there are are really important. We can always change that direction if we choose to, but at least having a purpose and a, a vision for where I want to be really makes a big difference in terms of the level of stress we have and how things work out. So what I'm focusing on here is helping people break through limiting beliefs, because we all have them. Oh, I can't do that. Um, developing clarity around what they want in their life. Focusing on what matters most to them, not somebody else telling them what matters most. Uh, learning how to reduce their stress and their worry, because worry is just wasted energy. Um, and then really taking ownership of their future. And it's looking at possibilities. You know, when when we did your your retreat this time, we used infinite or um, explore. Ex what was it? Experiencing the journey of possibilities, which is a phrase that I've been using for years and years and years. And that's really what this is about, is open the door to see what your possibilities are. And I put it out there at a very low price. It's only $147 if you register between now and November 15th. So I'm hoping that I will have a large group of women and that can really benefit from each other. So for everybody who's listening, whether you're here in Brandon, Tampa area, or you're out of state, this is an amazing, I signed up right away. It's an amazing train, training. It's a great opportunity to really, like Carol said, hone in and get get that subconscious to believe uh -huh. that what you want to achieve, you can achieve and, and right. get some great tools. So I hope you guys all come. We'll put the link when we drop the podcast. The link will be everywhere so you can purchase your ticket. Uh -huh. um, and if we have great places to stay here in Florida, if you want a little beach getaway vacation like Carol does, it's an absolutely. Awesome. So I love it. And so, all right. So now we're going to shift. So everybody that's listening, you guys know every podcast, at the end of the podcast, we do the, the better questions, better life. And I get nothing in return other than <laughs> I do these questions. In fact, I before, I got, <laughs> before I got on with Carol, I had to go down and get them out of my backpack that I take when I travel because I always have them with me. And I was like, oh, I'll be right back. I go get my cards. But so, Carol, tell us a little bit about why you came up with these cards. Sure. So a very dear friend of mine, Diane Allen, who also is an, a, a, an executive coach, um, we sat down and, and both of us really agree that if we ask ourselves better questions, we'll actually create a better life. If we think about what matters most, then we're focused on it. Um, and that's what we did. So we sat down and we came up with 77 questions that are questions that really cause you to think and reflect. And even though you may pick the same question two times in a row, you're going to answer it a little differently. So these are questions that you can ask yourself throughout your entire lifetime. And the intent is really to help people think about what matters, because a lot of us are just sleepwalking through life. And if we start living intentionally and we start creating the life that we want, we end up being much happier and much less stressed. And so that's what the cards are about. And I use them for networking events. I use them for training sessions. I've used them in every opportunity I've had. I, I love them. I, we, you know, I use them every day. I pull sometimes two or three times a day. I'll have a, a card out. Sometimes I split the stack between different levels of my house because I have an upstairs, downstairs. Mm. Um, and then this past weekend, Lisa, my friend Lisa Pulliam, she had her retreat and she had them at, she bought them at our, my last retreat and she had them out too. And 
it's really powerful to watch the card you pull is your card you're supposed to pull, right? It like, really is, like yeah. Lisa was going to say, we'll put them on the table. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You've got to let them pull the card because when they pull the card, there's so much more meaning behind it because yeah. it's so powerful. Like there was one girl, she got the card said um, uh, something about bliss. What if my what if my life was bliss or do I have bliss in my life? I can't really exactly right. agree. And she took a picture and she's like, I'm on that way there. I'm yeah, finding her. You know, it was really cool. It's was, it was fun. And then we had a little bit of wine and we uh -huh. did it again, but it's still the same thing. They still come out the same way. It's like your card you're supposed to pull. So, so uh, we're going to do what we always do, Carol. And I'm going to shuffle the cards and you're going to tell me when to stop. And we're going to read the card to you and you're going to answer the card. So, okay. Sounds good. Stop. Okay. Right there. Okay. So let's see. Ooh, what is my point of impact? Oh, wow. That's a big one. Okay, so my point of impact is working with the people that I work with to help them become their true potential. Um, it's really about, you know, I created my purpose years ago, um, and my purpose in life is to empower, inspire, and encourage women from all walks of life to live their life with purpose and intention, becoming the very best they can be. And that's, I, I really believe that's my impact. That's the point of impact. And that has been a true purpose for me for a very, very long time. And I've been on the receiving end of that. And I love oh, that. Thank you. So I appreciate that about you. I, I'm going to answer that question with you. I feel my point of impact is, is somewhat similar. Um, and for me, I feel like it's really taking the CEO mom, who if you're new to the show and don't know what that is, that means you're that old words, stay at home mom, because I don't believe you stay at home in a four walls and do nothing. Oh, no. You're running a household. That's a business. So taking the CEO moms or that professional woman who maybe is a mom or isn't a mom and just trying to balance life and help them become a shiro of that life, like help mm -hmm. them to find balance, help them to fill their cup. And, and like I said before, that's what our shiro league is all about is really bringing everybody in on a Sunday evening, eight o'clock at night, Eastern to nine and just be in a space of a community of women who are from the same walks of life, who have the same challenges, just at different times in our lives and lifting each other up so that we're right. really showing up in our, in our own autobiography, right? Uh -huh. Because we're not letting other people write our story for that. And that's, right. I feel like that's my point of impact. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. And yeah. the Cheryl league is wonderful. It, it really is. I just need to join on Sunday nights because I'm usually <laughs> sleeping. Yeah, and the, really, and the cool thing is, is we don't re and we get asked ask often. We don't record it because we've had we want everybody to know it's a safe space, and we have had things happen in the middle of the meeting where we had to pour into a lady when something was happening in her home that we could hear and really uplift her and you know offer prayer over her and and just be there for her. So yeah, if you, yeah. If you want more about that, you can um, go to wsliving.com and find more information. But Carol, where can everybody find you? Where's the best place to reach out to you? Okay. So my website is carolgill.com and it's Carol with an E. So C-A-R-O-L-E-G-I-L-L.com. Uh, the Better Questions, Better Life cards are for sale for $35. Those can be bought on uh, betterquestionsbetterlife.com. It has, a, I have an, my own website for that. And um, gosh, uh, that's, that's the best way to find me is on the, on the website. And they can also find you if they go to our website and look at the retreat information, yes. they can click on you and also find you there. So right. you can, if you don't remember any of that, just remember wsliving.com and click for Carol and you can connect with her that way. So thank you so much, Carol. It's been a pleasure having you. I'm glad we finally made it happen. I and am too. I'm so excited. So before we go, I remind everybody that we come into this world as, as this oyster, we're a little rough on the outside, but as we open up that oyster, you are that pearl inside. And I hope you go find your inner pearl of greatness. Have a great day. Thanks, Pearl. Hello, sunshine. Good to see